Hey, did you all realize that as of the day that this video is being taped, we have 44 days until hurricane season begins, which is June 1st through November 30th. But for the past six years, we've had hurricanes that have developed come ashore in certain areas in the month of May. Historically speaking, every year it gets earlier and earlier. So that's why I'm bringing you this quick video today. Now today, I'm just going to be talking about hurricane preparedness now, folks. What you need to be going through, what you need to be doing, and everything else, you can go onto my channel, catch the playlist for the hurricane preparedness, and all this stuff goes into great detail. So we're going to try to keep this one short, sweet, and to the point. You can go back and watch the videos to get any information you need on any of the said topics that we're going to be talking about. Now, we are going to be talking today about the 20 top things you need to be doing right now. Now, if you were, live in a hurricane-prone area and you do get hurricanes, now also remember it's not just for along the coast because the hurricanes, once they push ashore, they bring a whole different dynamic to what happens inland compared to what happens at the shore. No, you still can get the winds. You get the really heavy flooding, especially when these things crash in through to the mountains because it drops even more rain. It just makes more of a huge headache. So just because you don't live along the coast doesn't mean you can't get a hurricane. If you live anywhere within a 200 mile radius from the coast of any given point between the Gulf and the Atlantic side, even over on the Pacific side, which is a rare form to come in back that way. Nowadays, anything is possible. This is why you need to be prepared. So let's get going on this list. Now, this is in no particular order. Okay, folks, this is a template to try to get you to go by so you can start your planning. Number one, flashlights and headlamps. Make sure that you have a good flashlight, good headlamps and everything else. Um, I would highly suggest headlamps because if it's a hurricane situation and everything else, you're going to want to have your hands free. So make sure that you have a good flashlight or headlamps. Number two, we all, if you've been through a hurricane or anything else afterwards, if you don't have power and everything else, you want to make sure that you have bug control, bug spray, bug lotion, bug anything. Make your own, make lavender and everything else. But you want to make sure that you have something to deter the bugs because you will have to have windows open and everything else. You may not have screens in your windows because they might have been blown out. You want to be able to deter the bugs. Number three, batteries. Batteries of all kinds. Go through and see what you do have. You know, take a list. You know, do you need D's, C's, A's, triple A's, you know, nine volts? Do you need the bigger batteries for your larger flashlights? Whatever it may be, you want to make sure that you do have plenty of batteries. Number four, communication of any kind. A way for you to communicate or to get communications to you. We're talking emergency radios, battery powered radios, any of those type of things, walkie talkies, anything like that. You want to make sure that you have communication. Number five, tools. Now you may need tools to fix things while or during or after the storm. So make sure that you do have tools on hand, which could be anything from saws to hammers to drills, all this type of stuff. Duct tape, whatever you can put into your emergency kit, you may already have in your home, but if you don't, this may be some of the things you might want to check out. Number six, ways to make ice pre-storm. Pre-storm, you want to start making ice blocks and everything else and using your coolers and everything and load those bad boys up. Fill them full of ice and everything else so this way here, if something happens, power goes out, you don't have a generator or anything like that, you want to make sure that you can keep things cold for as long as possible. Ice will be the hot topic, the hot commodity. Number seven, a different types of power sources. Battery banks, generators, solar, however you want to do it, whatever you can afford, you got to have something that's different. This way here, you can somehow get a little bit of power in your house to power some of the things, recharge your cell phones, whatever it may be. Number eight, navigation. Now why navigation? You want to make sure that you know your way around your area or the area you may be planning to go to. So you want to make sure that you have good navigation tools either on your cell phones, on your laptops, or if you want, go old school, which I would highly suggest just in case that nothing else is working, go out and buy yourself a really good map because it could 
save your life. Number nine, know your evacuation routes. Make sure that if you do live in a hurricane prone area, this may be your first time. Make sure you know your evacuation routes and how to get out of Dodge when the shit hits the fan, folks. But you also want to make sure that you always have a plan B because everybody else is following the evacuation route. Have a plan B. Number 10, emergency backpack. Packed, ready to go with all types of different basic supplies that you need to weather the storm until you can return home or anything else and this way here you can just grab it and go and be done with it. Number 11, all different types of canned goods. Now that's canned goods from canned meats to canned potatoes to canned vegetables, whatever you like, beefaroni, anything that is canned that preferably you can just open and eat and be done with it. Number 12, all types of dry goods. Now this will be your rice, your pasta, your freeze dried foods, any of that type of stuff you want to make sure that you do have on hand. Number 13, very important right here folks, pay attention. I did an extensive videos on this and you can go back and watch it. First aid kits, you got to make sure that you have a good first aid kit that can handle just about anything except for unless you really want to spend the money like trauma kits and all this kind of stuff. Take care of the average everyday little bumps, bruises, cuts, you know, whatever. You got to have a good first aid kit in the house and something that's portable and that you can take with you. Number 14, if you do live in a hurricane prone area and you do have hurricane shutters and everything else on your homes, now is a good time to go out there and check them and make sure that they're all working properly. They open, they close, they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. Really, it wouldn't be a good idea to be doing that the day beforehand and you find out that there is a problem with your shutters or something. What are you going to do? So go out and check all that stuff, power wash, clean the tracks, whatever you need to do. <clears throat> That's just kind of a give me. Number 15, some way to cook without power. After the hurricane comes through and comes boiling through the whole area and everything else, more likely you're not gonna have power. So make sure that you have some way that you can cook food for you and your family. It is an emergency type situation. Cooking food is going to be key. This way here you can keep everybody happy, keep them fed. This way here they hopefully won't be so grouchy with you, if you get what I'm saying. Number 17, water. Water is a huge key. There's a lots of different ways that you can store water and everything else. Make sure that you do have a filter system to go along with that in case something happens and you have to get water from someplace different that you can filter out all the bad bacteria and chemicals and everything else so that you can still get that drinking water that you will need after a hurricane. Number 18, ways to save your important documents and pictures. There's quite a few different ways that you could do this. Back things up on your computer, put them on external hard drives, put your pictures and papers and everything else into waterproof bags. There's a lot of different ways to do this. Just want to make sure that you're checking all that out. Number 19, extra tarps and plywood because you just don't know what's going to happen. You may need the tarps and stuff maybe to patch your roof. You may need plywood to put over a window if something happens, your hurricane shutter let go. If you didn't have hurricane shutters and the window blew out, you could cover up that window. You may have to do it from the inside. You could still make sure that you're trying to keep the element from the outside to getting inside. Now, one little thing I'd like to throw on there, if it's in the middle of the hurricane and you have issues with your roof, please do not try to climb up there with a the tarp. Try to fix it during the hurricane. You're gonna have to avoid the area in your house where the water's coming in, fix it afterwards. Number 20, big weird in here, folks. Have any plan, writing it down, having a journal or notebook to go by so that all this kind of stuff goes into it so you know what you have, where it is, hopefully how to use it. And for a bonus one here, folks, and it should be a give me, but we're gonna throw it in anyways, number 21, cash. Always before a hurricane comes through, you wanna make sure that you go to the ATM, the bank, however you wanna do it, and make sure that you get cash in hand. The power is out, but stores are still open. They may only be taking cash. If you have a credit card, checks, or anything else, they will not accept them. Make sure you always have cash on hand. I am Survival Preparedness for Beginners. If you'd like to know more about any of these type of topics, like I did say, here at the very end of this video, you're going to see a playlist pop up on hurricane preparedness. And make sure that you go in and check that out. 
because it could answer a lot of your questions and everything else. And this way here, it keeps you safe, keeps you alive. And until next time, I will catch all of you on the flip side. Thanks for joining.